Hey there folks, welcome back. Mount Rushmore, they are calling to tear down Mount Rushmore again. And this has been popping up off and on over the last several months particularly, but it's really in focus right now because there's going to be a huge 4th of July celebration there. It would be a very picturesque location for a big fireworks display and celebration. Naturally, it's a very scenic area, it's a gigantic monument, it took years and years of dedication to construct, but there are people that want to rip it down. Native Indian activists, other types of uh, interest groups, Democratic Party, so on and so forth. You know, the usual uh, bunch of suspects. And before I get going here, um, does anybody have a suggestion for a good video camera? I need a, a good, like, you know, portable camera and... I'm clueless, so if anybody has any suggestions, recommendations, whatever, something that I could look at, I don't have a big budget, just put it in the comment section down below, I'd appreciate it. Anyway, back to Mount Rushmore. Now, this popped up again big time because the Democratic Party on their official Twitter account called the 4th of July display at Mount Rushmore, the planned display, uh, Trump making this grand display of white supremacy and I have a copy of the tweet here and they pulled it down like almost right away they pulled it down because of course they don't want to be sued for liable but it says you, you know you can't put anything on social media anymore and have it disappear because you pulled it down right just saying you think they would have learned their lesson by now if you put your foot in your mouth it stays there it says Trump has disrespected native communities time and again has he I, <laughs> I don't know he attempted to limit their voting rights and blocked critical pandemic relief. That voting rights, Democrats are always saying that. Oh, they're trying to keep you from voting. Now he's holding a rally glorifying white supremacy at Mount Rushmore, a region once sacred to tribal communities. Every square inch of the entire United States, according to tribal activists, was sacred to tribal communities um, or the Native Indian nation which by the way there is no such thing because if we're being completely honest here the United States Canada and parts of South America there was more than 5,000 tribes that we know of they were not a nation they did not get along it was not all uh, happiness and peace most of these guys fought with each other pretty much constantly but you'd have to actually study that history to know anything about it instead of just assuming that they were all happy farmers who were, walked around with open arms all day. It's not true. Uh, that's not to say that there weren't some uh, groups that were peaceful, but there were as many that were not. Just like anywhere else in the world with any other type of people, basically. So they, they retracted that story. It's kind of kind of excessive to make those claims. I can see why they pulled that story down and don't want to claim it now. <laughs> but yeah, there are activists out there, especially Native Indian activists, who call for that sort of thing. And so this calls on me to tell my Mount Rushmore story. Yes, there is one. I do have a Mount Rushmore story. I used to live in Kansas many, many years ago. And I, I've, ha I've mentioned this before. This is something I brought up before in passing. I don't know if I've told the complete story or enough of it, but I'm going to go ahead and do it now. Like I said, I used to live in Kansas many years ago, and I had a conversation with one of these so-called activists, if you will. Don't know how this conversation got started. I don't remember. It was when I was working for uh, Family Dollar back at the turn of the century or whatever the hell that was. <laughs> but there are a lot of Native Indians in Kansas, okay, and there are mo there are those among these people, not a lot of them, okay. If we're being honest, th you know, you don't assume that every native Indian believes this stuff or is an activist. It's just like any other activist group. There's always uh, one group of people or even an individual. Th think Jesse Jackson, for example, who speaks for everybody whether they want his voice or not okay but enough of them indian activists that consider themselves default activists who will never 
never, I promise you, miss an opportunity to try to make someone feel guilty for something that happened hundreds of years ago as if it was yesterday, okay? As if it was them personally who suffered it and it's your specific fault. <laughs> and so I had this I had this real quick conversation. I'm going to try to be as wise as an owl here. He was talking about how, and again, don't know how this conversation got started, how Mount Rushmore breaks his heart. And every time he looks up at it, he cries because of the oppression of the white man on the native Indian people. And so, you know, I don't go for that sort of thing. Just straight up from anybody. And I said, where's uh, Mount Rushmore? Where's Mount Rushmore? And he, he, he kind of, you know, he's got to think about it. He can't remember. He can't remember where it is. Uh, Keystone, South Dakota. Keystone, South Dakota, for those of you who are keeping track. And he, he tries to continue. And I was like, listen, stop. I said, if you're looking for white guilt, you got the wrong guy. My ancestors came over on the boat after the Industrial Revolution, which is true. <laughs> My ancestors came over on the boat after the Industrial Revolution. Whatever happened, they had nothing to do with it, and I don't claim it. And he, uh, he goes like this, and he starts to smile like this, and then he, he reaches across and pats me on the shoulder, just like that, and he goes, you know, you're smarter than the average white boy. That usually works. Just saying. And that was hilarious. The, the honesty that suddenly surfaced in the moment was funny and in some regards quite refreshing. Basically, he it was admitting to me anyways, yeah, it's an act. It's an act that he puts on and that many others like him put on to make people feel guilty. Because they gain something from it. They gain something from that, even if it's a little sympathy, because that little bit of sympathy, it's empowering. And don't think that just because I managed to get someone to admit it that they all will. It's not very likely. A lot of them are a lot more stubborn, but we were alone at the time, so <laughs> nobody else heard it. So what's the problem here? The problem is human nature and the fact that we have never improved. Never in all of recorded human history what has really changed. You heard the expression, there's nothing new under the sun. It's us that's really being talked about if you, if you want to get down to it. Because whereas technology has changed and circumstances have changed, and some of it has improved, some of it has not, we fundamentally have not changed. Human beings have never really changed, never really improved our condition, no matter how intelligent we've become. Now, how many, no matter how smart we think we are, we haven't changed. Look at new human nature. You can't trust just how seriously you can take anybody, anyone, or how much of what they say you can believe when you're dealing with another person. They will lie, they will cheat, they will steal, they will manipulate to get what they want, even if they don't know what that is. Even if they don't know what they want. Even if they're not sure. What are they going to gain from it? They don't know. But if they think it's more than what you have, they'll take it. By hook or by crook, as the old adage goes, if I can use another one. You just can't trust people, period. You can't. And you certainly can't trust all of what's going on now with uh, all these activist groups running around tearing things up with the, uh, the party conflict. Oh, Republican, Democrat, bang, bang, bang. And we're supposed to swallow it like a hungry fish on a hook. And we do. Most people buy into all of it. Very few people realize how much they're being manipulated. They keep relying on these people to be honest. They're not honest. You're not honest. Most people are not honest. They're not trustworthy. They have an agenda, 
I think that's why a lot of people like animals better than people, because an animal likes you or they don't. There is no hidden agenda. They don't formulate little plots in their minds to try to get over on people. We do that to each other. That's why I wonder why, uh, why it is we always try to contact aliens. How are you going to contact alien life and we're supposed to get along with them somehow. We can't even get along with each other. <laughs> it makes no sense. But that's my Mount Rushmore story. Um, <laughs> yes, these people will use situations like that to try to manipulate everyone to gain whatever little bit of an inch they can, whether they believe it or not. And right now there's a lot of that going on. It's an infection in this country. And, you know, it makes you understand why it is there are people who long for an apocalypse because a lot i'm sure there's many many people that think yeah we need a freaking reset where's that meteor <laughs> where's that super volcano well there's too many of us and we're all stupid anyway any thoughts on all of that go ahead and feel free to post your thoughts in the comment section down below and by the way i hope they don't tear down mount rushmore I'm tired of seeing monuments destroyed. Whether it's good history or bad history, we cannot erase our history or else we're going to repeat it. Just saying. Just That's just the logical point right there, I think. But yeah, please do give the video a thumbs up if you get where I'm coming from. Share it if you can. Subscribe if you're new. Check out some of the other content if you have not. Hit the bell icon. Maybe ScrewTube will tell you when a video comes out. Maybe not. You never know. If you wanted to help the channel out, want to help me out, there are links for that down below. Every little bit helps, and I sure do appreciate it. And again, if you forgot from what I mentioned at the beginning, I, I need a, a portable camera, a good portable camera. I got a small budget. Any suggestions, tell me down below. I'd appreciate it. So that being said, what more can I say? But stay tuned, folks, because there is more to come.